Amen. We're coming to the time of listening to the Word of God. Um, if you have your Bibles, you will be needing to put a marker in Matthew chapter 16, but also in John chapter 14. Today, I have a simple message for us based on the heart of the Gospels. And I just want to refresh our memory, to encourage us, to remind us of our calling that we have in the Lord. And I have uh, titled my ser sermon a very, very simple question, if you like. Um, and the question is that Jesus also asked, who do you say that I am? My sermon is, who do you say that Jesus is? Let us just say a prayer. Lord, we are privileged to come to your, to your word this morning, and I thank you that through your Holy Spirit, you enlighten us. Lord, you open scripture to us. Lord, you speak to us. And Lord, it is my heart and it is my prayer this morning that as I speak, that you will, you will speak to our hearts, O oh Lord. May this message resonate with us, Lord God. May we be blessed, encouraged, and equipped because that's all we ask. Teach us, O oh Lord. Teach us how to walk with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In our world today, we know um, the name of Jesus. Actually, I think it could be one of the most common and well-known names worldwide you will find a lot of books written about Jesus. A lot of them saying of who Jesus is or who may not be. A lot of ideas, a lot of uh, thoughts. Not all of them very helpful, unfortunately. Um, but also, I also want to say, I want to say that um, unfortunately there is teachings within the church today which are not always the most helpful. There's teachings who bring uh, community to an ideal, if you like, on believing of a certain thing. And the time comes where they are given, they give their belief and their faith into this ideal. And then all of a sudden, when they are not getting rich, when they are not receiving their big homes, when they are not um, receiving what they were promised, they get discouraged. A lot of teachings today, unfortunately, will teach that if we come to Jesus, we will be rich. If we come to Jesus, we will be strong. If we come to Jesus, there will be no sickness that will touch us. If we come to Jesus, there will be no suffering. Oh, I wish that was it. I wish that was the truth. But then if we are given to those things, the minute that we find some of us may be getting poorer, we get discouraged. Sickness come upon us or our loved ones and we lose faith. But when we look at scripture, brothers and sisters, I think Jesus is pretty clear. Jesus does not ask us to come to believe in him so we can get something from him in return. One of the requirements that he gives when um, he encourages other people to follow him. Do you know what it is? It says, you must die to yourself. You must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and then you follow me. What? Isn't that the opposite of our world today? Isn't that the opposite of what we learn today? Almost always, if I am going after someone, if I am going for something, I'm always being taught, I'm always encouraged that I must get something back. Well, Jesus here is saying, you must be in that place, you must be prepared to deny yourself, to deny your desires, to deny your selfish ambitions, if you like, and put other people first. Pick up your sufferings, pick up your cross, and then you follow me. Then you are ready to follow me. 
But so many of us struggle to comprehend that, struggle to understand that. As so many passages in Scripture, the rich man, when he said, Well, Lord, I do everything. What must I do to enter into the kingdom of God? Simple, he says. Just sell everything. What? His heart was taken captive by the wealth that he had. But looking at that passage I just mentioned to you, it gives us a clear picture of what the kingdom of God is all about, brothers and sisters. You must die to yourself and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. It's given us an understanding that in order for us to build the kingdom of God, it doesn't require for us necessarily to have our own castles. For us to build our own fortunes there. It all has to do about other people. It has to do about reaching out to the poor. It has to do about bringing out those people in darkness into the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus really asks for all of those who are willing to follow him. Are you ready? Jesus says. These are requirements that I give you. So today I just want to spend a little time into the Word of God that we can read together, that we can study Scripture together and see what does Jesus say about Himself? What does Scripture say about Jesus? And how we learn from it. Amen? The first passage that I want us to read is Matthew chapter 16. So if you have your Bibles, please follow me from verse 13 to 19. If you don't have your Bibles, don't worry. It should come up. Cotton already has all sorted it out for us. Thank you very much. And this is what it says. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And this is Jesus. And they replied, Well, some say John the Baptist, and others say Elijah. Yet still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus approaches them and he says, Well, what about you? He asked, Who do you say that I am? And then Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah. The Son of the Living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. A beautiful and a strong passage there. But look at the beginning, brothers and sisters. Right at the beginning of the passage, we find that even in Jesus' time, in his own birthplace, there is confusion. Jesus preaching his gospel, Jesus bringing healing and showing God's kingdom and teaching to the community that he is going around. And yet when he asks, well, who do people think that I am? There is a number of suggestions. Well, John the Baptist, who was before him. And then he says, others will say it's Elijah. Still, others will say it's Jeremiah, these prophets we find in the Old Testament, or one of the prophets. All of these thoughts of other people, often we find that in our lives, brothers and sisters. There will be thoughts that will be said out loud 
and often thoughts of other people may intervene or may aid to formulate our thoughts into what we may want or think. But Jesus, he comes to them and in a sense he says to them, well forget what they are saying. Forget whatever they are saying. What do you think? Who am I to you? And that's the question, brothers and sisters, that Jesus would want to ask us today. Who is Jesus for you? Who is Jesus for your life personally? What would your answer be? Because that's what Jesus wants to know from his disciples. You have been with me. You have seen me. What does it mean for you to believe in me? What does it mean to you, to your life? What change does it bring to your life to believe in me? Peter replies. He says, you are the Messiah. Hallelujah. You are the son of the living God. The true title of who Jesus really is. Peter had comprehended. He understood what it meant, who Jesus really is for his life and for that of the world. But Jesus says something very interesting to him. He says, what you just said to me, it is not revealed from your flesh and blood. What does he mean by that? I think, brothers and sisters, there's a lot more to the questions than sometimes we can just pick up from reading it. This is what I understand from it. Jesus said to him that you, this answer, this truth that you have, this revelation that you have received in your heart was not revealed to you by the books that you may have seen, was not revealed to you by the stories that you may have seen or heard from, from your forefathers or from people on the community. This is revealed to you through the help and the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you. This is revealed to you because of your closeness that you are with me. This, this is revealed to you because of the closeness that Father God from heaven has revealed to you. You have seen what the truth really is. You have understood the concept of what it means to be in Jesus. And there is a difference, isn't it, brothers and sisters? There is a difference of knowing about Jesus and really knowing Jesus. There is a difference of reading about who Jesus is. There is a difference of hearing of who Jesus is or ideas that people give us about Jesus from that time when you and I are born again, as Jesus said in John 3. When we are born again and we experience Jesus into our heart, we accept Jesus into our heart as a Lord and Savior. The Bible says that when we accept Jesus into our heart, what happens? We have the deposit of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. And oh, how grateful are we to be for that aid and help of the Holy Spirit. Because without it, we could just call ourselves another cult. We could just call ourselves just another religion. But for what Jesus has done for us, He has opened an eternity for us with the Lord. He's given us an opportunity to have a close, personal relationship with God. Who do you say that Jesus is for your life today, brothers and sisters? Where do you think your, your life is? Do you believe? Do you think that you are in that place where you have 
a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, where you have that ability, that opportunity to come to Him in your times of difficulty. Have that faith to say, Lord, take over. Whatever is going with me, take over. Or you're still not quite sure. I think as I read this passage, I see something else. And I hope I can explain it without confusing us. I think there is three pillars that are important to our walk, our faith with Jesus Christ. And think of that, brothers and sisters, as a triangle. Okay? So the first thing that we, we see that Jesus is asking him, who do you think that I am for you? He has that revelation. He has the truth that he has been revealed to him. And he says, you are the Messiah. And he says, this is the truth that I want everyone to know. So in a sense, looking at that triangle, the first step, brothers and sisters, for us, it is very important, is for us to be connected vertically with God. Our personal relationship, our walk with Him, the revelation that we receive when we know that Jesus is our Lord, Jesus is our Savior, and we walk with Him. Amen? Amen. And then the second part of that triangle Jesus says that upon this rock, upon the truth that you have, upon the people that are in this truth, I will build my church. I will build my church with people who dwell in that truth. I will build my church upon the people who have the capability of living according to the Spirit. And want to receive from Him. So vertically, uh, horizontally then, brothers and sisters, we connect in church with one another. Amen? So this is what keeps us in balance. So first and foremost, we must be strong with the Lord. We must establish our walk with God. Acknowledge that He is the Son of God. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. And the second... I cannot be a self-island. I cannot live on my own. It means nothing. I must hook up into the community of believers. I must encourage and be encouraged by the people who have the same hope, same faith, the same goal to worship and adore Him who is worthy. So that vertical is connected. But then there is one that is left and we need to close that and that brothers and sisters is mission it is mission you will hear a lot of teachings today which I don't agree by the way um, th saying words like how can church do mission what is that church can be involved in order to do mission well let me tell you that gives us straight away um, mission as an optional extra for the church. The Bible clearly states we don't do mission, we are the mission. What does scripture say? You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. The light, Jesus says for himself that he is the light and then he gives us that ability to be the light. Oh, those that are around us. So is a calling within ourselves, within our being, within our identity. We are, we ought to be the mission. It's not an option for us. If we call ourselves Christians, if we say that we are believers within our desire and the love of God that dwells in us, we must be in that place where we want to meet people and bring them back to God. To close that triangle, brothers and sisters. We live in the world that lives in darkness. And yet we have that light. We go into the world and as we speak the truth, that's where the light is spread into that community. 
There are so many people, and I meet a lot of people in, in food bank and other people in the community, sometimes literally just sitting with them. You see their faces changing from such burdens and pain that they are suffering. By literally having a conversation and saying, I'm here. I'm here listening to you and praying for them. The words, when you say God bless you, that means something. It has authority. Because it's not your authority, it's the authority that Jesus Christ has given you and me. And we are the salts of the world, as the Bible tells us. And what is the duty of the salt? It is to preserve. It is to clean. It is to heal. We are those people. We call ourselves Christians. We are those people that we can restore people. We can restore those who are broken. We can speak healing into the life of people. Because it's not by my might, brothers and sisters. It is because of His might. It is because we believe in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's what I see in this passage here. The three pillars that are essential to our faith. And Jesus says, you have got it. And it was not revealed to you by the things that you read or the things that you hear about people. It's because you have committed. It's because you have walked with me. It's because you know who I am. And you know what happened with the church afterwards. They gave their life. Literally, to spread the good news. And it's thanks to them that today we know about Jesus. It's thanks to them that today the gospel has reached here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when this question comes to you, brothers and sisters, I really hope that your answer is, he is the living Son of God. Amen? Because He is. He is not just a prophet like the Muslims teach. He is not just a good man like Jehovah Witness will try to tell you. He is not just a witness or an eloquent preacher that influences the life of people and makes them to follow Him. He truly is the Son of God. He is the all-known. He is all-powerful. You know, in Scripture, when Jesus was baptized, you know what happened? The minute that He came out of the water, this voice came from heaven, from the Father in heaven. And He said, This is my Son, in whom I am pleased. That means a lot. God can never say for any of you or any of me or any of the prophet that this is my son that I am pleased. Because we have all failed him. All failed him. Is only Jesus. This is my son to whom I am pleased. Praise be to God. And he is able to save you. He is able to bring salvation like a lamb in a slaughter like we read today in our communion. He went and he took upon our iniquities, our pain, anything that separated us from God. In a sense, we have no excuse except to receive what he has done for us. My time is flying. I just want to give you another point of why we want to be in Jesus, brothers and sisters. John chapter 14. The first six verses says this. Here Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He is in the time before he's taken away and he brings comfort. But at the same time, a very important message. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way, you know the place where I am going. Well, then Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you know him. You have seen him. I have to say, I find comfort sometimes when I read verses like this. You know, if there were people with Jesus confused to everything that's happening there, it makes me feel a lot comfortable sometimes when I don't quite know how things are moving on or what is happening in our world today. And you know, I want to say to you, it's okay. If you don't have all the answers like me, it's okay. It's okay to be confused. It's okay sometimes to feel a little bit uncertain. But the truth is that Jesus is trying to comfort them by knowing that wherever you are, whatever you're feeling, even if you don't know what is happening, know this, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no other way except through Jesus. Amen? Amen? In our world today, you will hear a lot of people, and I've heard this a number of times, I'm sure you may as well, they will say, there is one God. Amen? Amen. But there is many ways that you can go to Him. In the end, we all reach the same destination. Just like a mountain, there will be many ways that you can choose to reach the top of the mountain. Well, for the mountain may be okay, but not with God. There is one way, and that way is Jesus. And we ought to believe that. Any other way will cause us trouble. And these are God's words, not mine. Proverbs 14, 12. This is what it says. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. There is a way that it looks pleasant. It looks good in the eye of men and women. But in the end, it will lead us to death. You and I, may want to choose the path that has no suffering. We want to choose maybe the path that does not have any difficulties. But brothers and sisters, allow me to encourage you one thing. Whatever path that you choose, may Jesus be in it. Because whatever path, no matter how beautiful, if Jesus is not in it, it will lead us to death. Without, without any hope. But this is the um, essence of the passage that Jesus is giving to his disciples here. I just want to give a very uh, quick glimpse to also what we have been studying in our Bible studies. Jesus says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, but also believe in me. He said, I'm going away from you, but I'm going there to prepare a place for you. So where I am, you may come also. This is good news for us, brothers and sisters. Why? Because scripture elsewhere says that Jesus, only Jesus, was able to overcome death. Only Jesus was able to overcome the power of death. So really here, 
it just gives us the whole package. Whether you are in this life, you have an example of Jesus, how we ought to live. But in our last days, where we come to our last time before we go to the Lord, we are also in the arms of Jesus. There is nowhere that we will be away from Him. Scripture clearly tells us that He has done it all. And it literally means that He has done everything for you and I if we choose to believe in Him. It says, I am going there to prepare a place. And where is this place, brothers and sisters? I want to say, it is right there in the very presence of God. That in the moment when we give our last breath, it is not, oh, we wait for a little or we wait too long. It will be in that split second that we go into the very presence of God, into the very presence of Jesus Christ and His love that He has for us. Everyone who believes in Him will have that security of what Jesus has done for us. There is no journey after death. It's straight to Jesus. And there we will remain in His presence. Isn't that comforting? It should be. Because in our world today, one of the most difficult walks, one of the most, sorry, talks that we have is about death. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of some uncertainty. And this comes true when we are not well. This comes true when we are struggling. But with Jesus, Scripture says there is hope and there is joy. There is certainty. Jesus has provided all of that for us. Don't be troubled. Believe in what I am doing for you. So whether we are here, brothers and sisters, whether we are on the way there, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for every aspect of our life. And may the Lord give us that strength and continue to give us that revelation. There is no other way but the way of Jesus. There is no other truth except in Him. And Scripture says, only when we receive, only when we believe, only then will we be set free. Set free indeed is the truth that will set us free. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just say a prayer. Oh Lord my God, I thank you that you are a God of promises. And your word rings truth to us. Thank you, Lord, that we can rely on you. Elsewhere in, in Psalm, it says, Even if my father and my, and my mother forsake me, God, you will receive me. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. What a faithful God you are, O oh Lord. And Lord, I pray that the truth that has been said today may it resonate into our hearts. Lord God, minister to us. Help us in our weakness. God, help us follow the example that you have set in this world through your Son, Jesus. Lord, may we be people for the community. May we be people who reach out to those in need, who reach out to those in pain and bring the truth of your salvation. Lord, may we be the instruments of your hand, O Lord. And God, help us grow in our faith. Lord, even death does not scare us anymore. Even death does not have power over us anymore. You have done it all. And praise be to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, may we have the ability to accept this truth and live in freedom. Live in your peace, O oh God.
trusting in you in all our walk, in all our situation. You are the only place we can come for refuge. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.